Mary Show. 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 Just, just to let you know. That's right. Well, hello, Larry. Tonight at Larry's, we have the multi-talented actor, musician, and prominent old-school dancer, Mark Monero. We well, can't get everything we wish. But don't you annoy like you're in a comfort of your own home. So sit back, grab a drink, as we look behind the scenes of the classic movies Babylon and the Firm. No, sir. There's two men inside, yeah. And one at work and one at work, you hear me? And insights to the early days of the forgotten poppers of Covent Garden. This is the Larry Mark Show. Mark Monero. Just, just to let you know. Thank you for coming through to Larry's Bar. Thank you for inviting me, mate. Oh, man, it was a must, man. You know what I mean? You was, you was part of the top ten, you know what I mean? Oh, so I appreciate you, that. Can you just give us a little bit of background about who you are? Me, I'm Mark, and I, uh, I've been dancing since I was about, say, 13 years old. I'm 47 now. Wow. So, like yourself, I remember you said to me that you uh, used to copy that Ray Harryhausen yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. to um, Jason and the Argonauts. That's yeah. what I used to do as well. Wow. Uh, and that was before popping, so it was like kind of the robotics thing, wasn't it? So I used to love all that stuff, and I remember the two geezers named Tick and Tock, do you right, yeah, they were like punk robots. Yeah, yeah. They were robot geezers. I thought they were pretty cool as well. So, uh, moving into popping and everything, I remember uh, there was a documentary, a weird documentary of Tony Basil. Okay. I think it was called Tape One and Tape Two. And when I saw Poppy P in that, I was just like, woo, I've got to have a piece of this thing, man. Yeah. But uh, also, the acting thing, I've been doing that since I was like 11. 11? Uh, yeah, as my mum sister worked in uh, Anna Shears in okay. the office. And we, sorry, where is Anna Shears? Anna Shears, it's a uh, children's theatre drama school. Okay. But not drama school as in all day school, it's like uh, in the evenings for an hour and a half. Right. Uh, and it wasn't so much as a middle class thing, it was quite um, working class kids, which in, in acting there wasn't that many kids of that nature, like a working class kind of... Uh, so a lot of directors, like um, the guy who did Bugsy Malone, Alan Parker. Alan Parker, yeah. He went there to cast a lot of people from, from Anna Shear. So it's like people that were a bit more grounded, uh, not grounded, I suppose, a bit more, not common, but a bit more street. Yeah. Were kids, do you know what I mean? That were more natural. They kind of went for that. So I was kind of lucky to be part of that. You was there from what sort of age again? About 11. 11? Yeah. So obviously that's like secondary school. You just started secondary school. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, what was the earliest role that you, you took on? Uh, I think one of the earliest roles was like a program. I did a lot of, there was this thing called schools and colleges programs. I think you remember that. Yeah. yeah, and I was in a few of those. They were like the first Grange Hill type of things. All right. Uh, and they'd be like little plays, like little uh, dramas, and then you talk about them in school. Do you remember them in primary yeah, school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did a couple of them. Then I did Grange Hill okay. for a while. But I think before Grange Hill, I did Babylon. Okay. Which freaked me out. Um, when, I, when I got the part, uh, the part, what, they wanted me to do some um, pretty heavy things, like talk about sex and things like that, and I was really young. And I remember my dad, the, the producer coming around to our house and my dad saying, like, you ain't doing that. No, he's not doing that. Yeah, he, no, 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 he's not talking about this. He's not saying this. He's just crossing out with a pencil, all the things. And I think I nearly cried because I thought I wasn't going to get the part yeah. if he said I couldn't do this and that. And I was shouting at him. But they said, yeah, yeah, fine, because they really wanted me in it. Yeah. So they put me in it. It was really fun. Freaked me out because there was all these rust of people and this weird smell of this stuff, ganja thing. Yeah. And I was just like, whoa, what's <laughs> going on? It was wicked though, it was wicked. when you done Babylon? I must have been about 15. 15? 14 or 15. Wow. I think, yeah. How did you juggle, like, school and acting? School didn't seem to... I don't know, I mean, there's 30 kids in a, in a class and everybody learns in a different way and yeah. picks up things. So 
I mean, I didn't take to how the system was run. You know, I found my, I was quite intelligent, but I kind of lost interest in a way. And I suppose I was working as well. So yeah. some teachers were assholes, I have to say. Some were quite racist. Uh, but at the time, I remember it's like people looked down on you. Teachers, there was a, 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 a PE teacher who, I don't know why, he hated my guts. Right. And I don't know if it was a colour thing. He used to re make references to colour sometimes at me. But how my parents taught me, I was quite aware of what he was doing. Right. So I think I wound him up. Yeah. Uh, he, one time he, we was doing a trampoline class. It was actually hilarious. And there was three black geezers in there and we all got thrown out one after the other. And when I, I was the last one, he was on this, bouncing on this trampoline and he, <laughs> he looked at me and he said, don't give me them black looks, son. Get out. <laughs> So I just laughed, smirk on my face. I didn't care. I was in the dressing room, getting dressed, and he came in the room and took off his whistle because they had whistles then, didn't they? Like the seventies. Took off his whistle. He goes, "Come on, son. Me and you now." I just thought, "Wow." I was about, you know, 40, 30. Wow. I just thought, "Whoa." I said, "I ain't fighting you." Do you know what I mean? So I just got like, walked out. So after that, things like that, I kind of lost interest. Yeah. And I was working, so it was quite easy. They didn't care that I was taking days off after a while and I didn't care. Bit a part of me wished I had, you know, learnt a lot more stuff in the right. way of the school curriculum, but I've learnt still, I mean, you if you, you want to educate yourself, you can do that. Yeah. And I think I have done that and I'm not lacking in anything to do with uh, what schools tried to teach me or anything. I just, you know, made my own way in that kind of way. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was I was fortunate to, to get a job there. The lo one of the first jobs I got was one of the locations was at my school. What and job was that for? It was like East, it was like Grange Hill. It was okay. a school program. Yeah. And uh, I had to. Uh, I went back to the school and they got some of the extras with some of the kids and some of the teachers. So we was all eating in this uh, lorry uh, catering thing, and I went on there with my plate of food and one of the. Deputy head said, Monero, get off this bus. What are you doing here? And the director came up and said, no, he's one of the principal characters. And he's like, piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved that. When I first started seeing you down like Covent Garden and all yeah. that, and um, one of my mates was saying to me, yeah, that's, that's, that's Mark Monero. He was in Babylon. And I, I'd already seen Babylon by this time, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, they said, yeah, he was, he was the guy in Babylon, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but what's he down here for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, it was like, it was pretty cool that you've been on TV, but you can kind of like kick it with the rest of us. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a crew called uh, Global Wizards yeah. in Dalston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're from Dalston. Yeah. Was you ever part of them? Yeah, no, it was, uh, as I remember, it was the Popping Wizards, we were called. Popping Wizards, yeah, all right. Yeah, and I was in, I wasn't in the Popping Wizards, which is Danny Francis, uh, Paul Barrow, Colin West, and there was an American guy, I can't remember his name, and some other guy, but uh, I think it was Tunde. But um, well, me and Mark Francis, Danny's brother, yeah. were in Wizard Force, which was like the backup crew. Okay. Yeah, and Leary, oh, okay. who was like a, um, Jeffrey Daniel person he hardly danced he was really tall he used to look over walls <laughs> and used to just get his hair all the time but he had a perfect like pop that he used to do he was like you know jeffrey kind of style uh so yeah that's how we started the dancing so what was like going back further what was your dancing influences as i said popping pete i suppose danny Danny, Danny reminds me of, you know, have you ever seen a film Amadeus? About Mozart? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he reminds me of him. He would, there was this bit in it where he's, this guy's playing some piano piece. Yeah. And then Amadeus comes along and just does the same thing, but does it better. <laughs> and then does it backwards and then does it the other way around. Danny reminds me a little bit of that. Okay. Like he can, he watches you, does what you do, and then shows you how to, what you could do to like yeah. enhance it or something like that. So in that way, Danny is, you know, Sometimes it would be annoying, cause, but most of the time he's right. But yeah, you know, he's a big influence. And Poppin' Pete and all those LA, yeah. mostly the LA poppers. Not any, anyone else in England, really. Oh, Dan, Dennis Charles and yourself, actually, oh, when I first God. met you. Your um, isolation and little stuff like that. And uh, Moomin. And Moomin. That, that's what I wanted to ask you next. How did you and Moomin meet? 
I think it was through you, wasn't it? No, I met you through Moomin. Oh, I thought it was through you. It's getting grey area now. Uh, I think you need I, I a bit more to drink, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Covent Garden then, wouldn't it? Starting okay, from yeah, Covent yeah. Garden. But, uh, it was good. I don't remember, I don't know if it was me, you, Dino. Right. Who danced. He's very much like uh, Taco. He's yeah, I, like, I, I wanted to ask you about Dino, but now you've brought it up. I, yeah. I, like, I think that like people watching this need to know, because this is obviously hip hop history that you're not going to find out about in books and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So like, please tell us a bit more about Dino. Dino, yeah, this is years and years ago. Well, basically, he used to go around his house, he'd open his front door and I'd just steam into him and we'd have a fight and smash up his old um, <laughs> flat. First of all, then we start dancing, <laughs> but he's dancing. But the thing is about Dino, this is quite sad, is that he, he, he wouldn't, he didn't like dancing outside, did he? He didn't like dancing in any clubs. Yeah. It was really hard to get him to do anything. Yeah. But man, that gig when I was in his house, when he danced, you know, the uh, Tarko's kind of movements. He yeah, had that yeah. two packs. He had it nailed, and he had his own style. But uh, he was a, a reluctant dancer, which is a shame. Yeah. But um, I mean, I, I only hung around with him for about two, three years or something like that, and then he just went missing, kind of parted ways, basically, yeah. which is a shame. I still wonder where he is. But yeah, I don't think there's enough information about no, him. No, there isn't. there's not even any photos of no, him. No, no, no. And if you took a photo of him, it probably wouldn't come out. <laughs> he's got that kind of power. Like, what, blurred? Yeah. Everyone else is sharp yeah, and he's just blurred. blurred. Yeah. There was that time when, um, like, when I got... Uh, introduced to you mm. through Moomin, yeah. we kind of we, we, we kind of started to to formulate a group yeah. called a uh, truly unique truly unique yeah yeah yeah. So um, can you tell us about the members of Truly Unique? It was me, you, Darnell, Moomin, kind of Leary was meant to be there, but he never yeah. showed up that much, <laughs> did he? And uh, Dino, who no, actually never showed up, but um, those were brilliant times. I don't know if you remember as well. I remember we was. How we started that is we were dancing downstairs from where I live. Right. And uh, Danny was there. And he kept saying to us, you three should, you lot should dance together. Right. And then we just went, you know what, maybe we should. And then we just called ourselves, we said, you know, truly unique. But I remember <laughs> uh, saying, I don't want to dress in like hip hop kind of fashion. I want to wear suits. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of wore suits, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind yeah, of like zoot cool. suits. Zoot suits, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which was cool. It was good times, wasn't it? We made up some de decent uh, uh, routines. Because I remember, like, with, with your suggestion of, of wearing suits and to step away from the norm, as yeah, it were, yeah. like, we found that using the suits would make different sharper shapes exactly. and it can like um, accentuate exactly. your movements exactly. as well exactly. do you know what I mean and I mean it harks back to those old films that I saw where the guys are wearing zoot suits black and white films which right, I love yeah. old black and white films so I love all that that look and uh, the yeah. zoot suits and stuff like that so you know I wanted to bring that in, in there as well as truly unique uh, obviously like We've done quite a few shows and stuff like that. We've mm. done that Mantronics video and uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like that was a like sweet silhouette thing, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Early was day. was it baseline? Baseline. Baseline, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that was a bit of a laugh actually. I yeah, loved yeah. that. And like we done think like fashion shows and stuff. We done that fashion show in Wales. Remember? Oh uh, yeah, that was with Darnell as well. That wasn't was with Darnell. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And we did, we did, we did one at Hippodrome, didn't we? We did, yeah, quite. We done and shows all over the gas. The one we did, I remember Darnell. He had a a jacket that looked like a picnic wrapper, which I said <laughs> that was horrible, <laughs> and I just completely slated him. This man, poor man, he had his hair like slicked back, didn't he? <laughs> And we came up on this raised stage thing. Darnell never told us. Yeah. And he took out a can of Elnet and like incorporated like <laughs> robot moves with spraying Elnet. In his he, was, he was. Boy, he was after, out we there. Finished, after we finished, I laid into him. <laughs> I said, what was that? Elnet. What are you Elnet. doing? <laughs> But he, um, he was he was properly out there. He was yeah. He was very very creative. Yeah, yeah. no, I'll give it that. He was, but he like, was give us a heads up, you know. Yeah, what I mean? exactly. Because you know I mean? it like spray me in my eye. Yeah, I mean? you know what I mean. 
<laughs> ah, my eye while I'm popping. Ah. Blinded us. But yeah, yeah. that was, that was, uh, Darnell was, um, yeah, special. Yeah, my special, <laughs> special. He's a good dancer, though. He's a good dancer. Definitely, yeah. he, he he changed. A, he he gave um. He gave a lot of scope to other dancers yeah, out right. there. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, after truly unique, mm -hmm. like everyone went their separate ways. Moomin became MC Melo. Darnell, like. Don't know what happened to Darnell. No, still no, looking no. for him. Yeah. You went in more into your your acting. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I remember seeing you in after, after like just after Truly Unique was um, the film with uh, Gary Oldman and like the late uh, Terry Supat called oh. The Firm. Oi, I don't ask him to come, boy. He knows what's going down. So you stood your ground, I didn't you, son? Yeah, me and Snowy put him out of frame beer, OK? Oh, ethnic bonding ritual. Right on, brother. He'd be smiling right now. And he'd split his cheeks open. Know what I mean? Can you tell us about like what it was like on, on, on the set for that? Film? That was quite hardcore. Terry... Yeah, Terry Super. I played his little brother in it. You was his little brother? Yeah. But, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. But um, he, is, he was actually older than me as well. But... Uh, yeah, I played um, just this guy who was uh, was annoyed because uh, yeah, he gets a cut on his face, doesn't he? Yeah. And I'm slagging off Gary Oldman and saying, "What did you do to him? You take him out, and this is what happens." So, da, da, da. Before you carry on, what was the actual premise of the film? What was what was the film about? Football, football hooliganism. Okay. Football violence. And in Terry, the 80s. Terry was who? Terry was one of the. Uh, it's like I, I think it was like IC, IC. So ICF. Yeah, I ICF, think. but. Uh, a fictionalised version yeah. of that. Uh, but it was directed by a guy called Alan Clark. Alan mm. Clark first did Scum. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he was known to kind of, you know, he, he would go up to, there was this scene in Scum where there the, was, I think it was a basketball or a football match. Yeah, yeah, basketball. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the blacks against the whites. Blacks against the whites. Yeah. And he went over to the uh, white geezers and said, these black geezers over there, they're calling you a bunch of uh, bunch of honkies, like wankers, and they fucking do you. Then you go to the black geezers and they're calling you a bunch of niggers, like fucking have it. And he would let that like, literally want the violence. Yeah. You know, he's a brilliant, he's a brilliant director. When we did um, The Firm, I did, I, I said to him, so what do you want me to do? He goes, just, just act, just see what happens. <laughs> All right, so I just did it. He went, do it again. Just do it differently. <laughs> did it again differently. Then I did it the third time. He went, good. And we'll do the second one. We'll take the second one. And that was okay. it. That's about as much direct. So he had a really real yeah. rawness about him, which was amazing. Right. And Gary Oldman is a really, really fucking brilliant actor as well. It was really natural acting with him. You yeah. just feel like you're just talking like how me and you were talking. It's yeah. just how he acts. He's brilliant. It's just easy. Well, I did another thing with him after that uh, mm -hmm. called Sid and Nancy. Yeah. Which is a punk in, film. In fact, we were still truly unique when yeah. you didn't... Because I remember reading the script to it. Oh, okay. Can I, can I, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I remember reading the script to it. And, yeah. and you said, yeah, I've just got this part. Oh, wicked. So, yeah. yeah. I remember, yeah, Sid and Nancy. That yeah. was a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. About Sid Vicious. Yeah. Nancy Spongeon, yeah. So those are two movies you've done with Gary Oldman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you... After after those two, obviously, um, you went into EastEnders. Yeah, after a while, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what was was there anything between um, between the firm and EastEnders apart from apart from? Uh, well, I'd always done radio plays, a lot of radio plays. Which yeah. I don't remember the name of, and I did a few television things. I did a comedy show uh, for Central Television uh, about. Um, like these jobless people doing a work apprentice thing. It's like a comedy thing, but it only went one season and then they took it off. Yeah. So I was just doing bits and bobs in between those things. Yeah. Uh, I was quite, I was working quite a bit there. Yeah. It was quite good. And then EastEnders landed in your lap. Yeah, yeah. Everybody around me, uh, actor friends, would be like, I'd never do EastEnders. So I used to hear all this stuff and I was thinking, that, well, that's what you're, you're not supposed to do EastEnders. I'd never do, never do adverts. Never do soaps. It's all about you know proper theatre and proper film. So in my yeah. head, I had this preconceived view that I'm not allowed to do this. And uh, 
So when I got EastEnders, I went, you know what, fuck it, I'm doing it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Which, in some ways, not, not, I don't regret it, but it's the way that I think, the way that I am, my personality, I would have preferred to do more underground kind of something a bit more, you know, stuff a bit more different, you know, like, you know, the Sid and Nancy thing in Babylon. Mm. But, you know, it, at the same time, I did learn a lot uh, doing that. One of the things was not to do stuff like that. But it was, <laughs> it was good fun in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I did it for six, six, seven years. Six, seven years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was going through turbulent times there. I was quite rebellious as well, so yeah. I, mean, I shouldn't really say, but um, yeah, I was a little bit... A little bit uh, rebellious, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it comes I lasted that long. To tell the truth. Mate. Yeah, it was hard but, times. But after that, mm. you got through that. Yeah. Even though it was choppy weather on the sea. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it so, was choppy. I yeah. mean, it, obviously it paid well. And yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Not that I'd noticed, I mean? but yeah, yeah, it was... Got through the other side. Mm. And then um, it was like... Me and you, 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 you asked me to do a video with you. Which we did, was that? That was Lady Sovereign. Oh, yeah, 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 Lady Sovereign. That was good fun, wasn't it? That was fun, man. But, yeah. and, but I was, like, deep into retirement them times. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, I'd yeah. I seized up. Yeah, da- yeah, same era, though, to a point. I was, like, you know, I wasn't really dancing after doing EastEnders for so long. Yeah. Dancing kind of took a, uh, it took a, took a back kind of thing. So, yeah. It, but the thing is, though, it's always in us. It's in me. I, yeah, it's I muscle think, memory, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't think I'll ever stop dancing until yeah. I, I can't walk. Uh, so, you know, it was enjoyable doing it. And, I mean, it was a little bit... Uh, it was like a reggae-ish scar tune as well, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of a, a fusion of that kind of... Nine dancing. to five, that's what it was Nine called. Nine to five, yeah. I can't find it on YouTube, but, yeah, that's what it's yeah, called. I've got Nine it to five. I've got it somewhere. When we was at the film set and I kept seeing you practicing and dancing all the time, mm. and it's like it's like you've never stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like you was you was always practicing, and I was thinking, bloody hell, this guy is he's. I stopped for so long that this guy has. I don't think he's ever stopped because it looked like he was coming out with new things as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose what happens is like when I was doing EastEnders as well. Do, it would do my head in so much I'd escape into dancing come to think of it I'm starting to remember now so one way or another I would still be dancing you know in my room yeah by myself with headphones on do you find it therapeutic definitely definitely I don't I never I can't think of a day where I don't really dance okay. that's my one point in the day yeah. I'm doing something because I mean when I'm in my studio as well I've got headphones on which is annoying I've got to have a long 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 lead <laughs> Sometimes I'm dancing and it's like yanking the thing out, <laughs> the thing, you know, plug it back in. And I've got pretty expensive headphones, so I can't be doing that kind of activity. Bluetooth, mate. Bluetooth, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> Let's think about it. Remote headphone usage. Good for the dancing. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it does. It keeps me sane, dancing. So yeah. I've never, yeah, I never really stop. Never really stop. So, plus, you know, the, 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 the inevitability of, you know, you're going to be filming something. So you have to come up with something. Yeah. And sometimes you're standing there and it all goes to pot, doesn't it? But yeah, at least yeah, yeah, yeah. the energy of dancing, you just keep it going, <laughs> don't you? And then it starts, you start calming down and you start isolating your moves. Yeah. yeah. With that now, mm. going from, from Lady Sovereign 9 to 5, mm. moving it up about five years, mm. like, like we kind of got back together again mm-hmm. and... It was me, you, and Danny. We did the breaking convention That's right, yeah. for for John C D. Yeah. Um, by this time, we're like bang into our forties. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No yeah. spring chicken, no more. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you had to go back on stage. How did you feel about going back on stage? And was it like three thousand people? Some it was, it was a big number. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. How did you feel about going back on stage, like to do a, a, a performance? Uh, it's quite. I was quite taken aback by the fact that knowing that people like Pete was going to be there and uh, and and being at Sadler's Wells, because right. I've seen a few shows there, and I've always wondered what it'd be like dancing on that that stage. Yeah. So many amazing people have danced. I'm not just talking about uh, hip hop, yeah, yeah. types of dancing. So it's an amazing uh, thing to do, but I did feel agoraphobic. The stage is massive, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, yeah, you're dancing in your room. <laughs> Now it's like <laughs> acres of space. It's just like, right, 
try and think, try and think of yourself in your bedroom. So yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. I loved it. It's the, re the rehearsal and tra the process was really good as well. Because yeah. within that, I mean, we was rehearsing for ages, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. So I got quite fit from doing that. Did you? Yeah, 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 wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good to do. I mean, I reckon we did better things in rehearsals than what we did on the actual stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so it's a shame we couldn't film that. But, you know, that's how it goes, isn't it? It's hit and miss things sometimes. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was an honour to be, like, back on stage with, with two of the people that I thought were, like, the, 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 the best in the country. Well, that's what I felt about you and Danny. That's what I felt. It was amazing to be. And finally dancing with Danny as well. Yeah, like, exactly. As well. Yeah. I thought that was quite a cool thing. Yeah, because you know, he... About time and all, kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 to call these years, but yeah, it yeah, happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and after... after um, Sadler's Wells, yeah. I saw you in, there's, there's a couple of Chemical Brother videos. Oh yeah, I the saw you. director Adam, he appreciates dancing right to the max and he, I know him through acting as well. But uh, yeah, he got me doing all kinds of mad characters in that. I had to wear like this all-in-one suit with these uh, lights in them. And instead of doing it CGI, he, he, he wanted to do it like this. So I had all these lights in me and I had this battery pack in my, in my back and I just had to do all these dance moves and then he'd switch off the lights and, and mess around with it that way yeah. instead of using CGI. So he yeah. had really good ideas. So that was fun. And then, because uh, they've got a really, uh, they, as, as musicians, when they're doing their live stuff, they're, just, they're on computers and keyboards and stuff. This is, this is a Chemical, chemical Brothers. Chemical Brothers. Okay. So, uh, for all their gigs, they have like all this mad visual stuff going on at the back. Yeah. So I've been this this uh, dot man. They called me dot man. So I had all these dots on my face, all around my body, and uh, I was also a clown. This scary okay. clown that like, you are all my children now. Like this mad people would be like looking at this like <laughs> gig, I'm looking around, everyone's staring at this mad face. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah. And recently, the last uh, the last Glastonbury thing. I did uh, some dancing for them them as well, okay. which is pretty cool. So that keeps keeps me excited. You know, that's brilliant. So you're still doing dancing work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a, few, brilliant. a few months ago, I had to do something. For yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mate. And that was fun. That's fun. Freaks people out when they put it on Facebook. It's like, <laughs> you know, I've got like 600 friends on Facebook. Are they real friends? <laughs> but, you know, eight people go, yeah, great. Like, the rest is just like, fuck is that? <laughs> I'm sure it freak, freaks them out. But good. I've never been a conventional person. I don't want to follow any, you know, typical way you're supposed to be. I mean, it's taken me this long to, 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 to think like that anyway, doing acting, dancing and music. Yeah. So, you know, I'm who I am, uh, you know, hopefully to uh, in inspire other um, black uh, kids and anybody else, black, white, anything. Who yeah. Got their own way of doing things. I strongly like, believe in that. The arts and being creative, that in in that, in that sense of the word, means that you 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 make up your stuff and you you you, you learn from someone and then do your version of what you think that is, and that goes right. with everything in the arts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to refer to something or something, and it's the way you do it. You know, you go like, oh, I was influenced by that, but no one might, not everyone would actually know where you got that from. Yeah. Some people copy stuff, which is different. Do you know what I mean? If you rip someone off, then that's different. Mm. But if you're inspired by something and make it your own, then there's nothing wrong with that, I feel. That's what you used to say, put your signature in Yeah, it. exactly. Brilliant avenue in the chair talking to you well, thanks about for having your, me, man. your life. It's been a pleasure man. doing this, man. You All these guys I mean? here, man. It's wicked. It's nice, yeah, comfortable man. atmosphere. It's wicked. This is brilliant. Yeah, fun, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. yeah. And this bar reminds me of something my mum had, just missing the pineapple it, ice bucket. I've got the pineapple ice bucket at home. In oh, fact, it? my one's a pear one. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. What, from the 70s? From the 70s, yeah. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. See what it you got the frilly yeah, mat the, thing. Right? Yeah, 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 we had all of that. We had, we, we had all of it. Yeah, we had that, man. Oh, you know, we weren't allowed to touch it. Ah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the living room where you're not allowed to go in. It's yeah. plastic over the seat. <laughs> is it one of them ones? It's like a scene from Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, it was a brilliant having you here, man. Nice one, really guys. do appreciate you coming through. Thanks, yeah? man. Cheers, man. Thanks. This is the Larry Show. Show. Just, just to let you know, that's right.